JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for April the 21st. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It lost the most ground against uh, the Canadian dollar, the New Zealand dollar and the Aussie, um, which took the third and uh, the second and third place uh, respectively, but with a large margin compared to the Canadian dollar. Uh, the only currency against which the greenback did not underperform was CHF, with dollar franc uh, being found virtually unchanged uh, today uh, during the early European morning. Now, the weakening of uh, the US dollar and the safe haven franc, combined with the fact that the risk linked currencies were the main beneficiaries, suggests that the market participants traded in a risk on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major European indices traded in the green, held by a clutch of uh, positive uh, earnings uh, results. However, later in the day, in the US, although the Dow Jones managed to climb a bit higher, the S&P 500 finished unchanged, while Nasdaq fell 1.22%, dragged by a 35.1% um, collapse in uh, Netflix. Uh, the streaming giant saw its largest one-day fall in over a decade after it reported a, sub a subscriber loss for the first time again in over, uh, in over a decade. Now, in Asia, uh, Japan's Nikkei and South Korea's KOSPI rose, but China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng fell. And this may have been due to concerns that the zero-tolerance COVID policy in the world's second largest economy will result in severe economic wounds. Now, as for our view, we are still reluctant to call for a bullish outlook in stock indices. Even if upbeat earnings results continued to add support, and even if they help Nasdaq to rebound, we believe that the overly hoggish expectations over central bank tightening, the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, and concerns surrounding the Chinese economy could, could keep any additional uh, gains limited, at least until we see signs that all these um, developments are fully priced in. Now, back into the FX uh, market, the, ca the Canadian dollar was the main gainer and the fuel may have been the higher than expected Canadian CPIs for March released yesterday. Both the headline and core rates rose by much more than anticipated, with the headline rate hitting a 31-year high, perhaps intensifying speculation that the Bank of Canada may need to continue raising rates aggressively and why not deliver another... Um, 50 basis points increase uh, when it meets uh, next. We got CPIs today as well during the early Asian session from New Zealand for the first quarter. The year-over-year the year -year rate rose notably uh, here as well, but uh, the difference uh, was that it came below estimates. Market participants have been already anticipating high, a higher inflation rate uh, for New Zealand. That's maybe why we didn't see the Kiwi outperforming the Looney. Yet, it was the second gainer in line uh, among the majors, as the data suggests that the RBNZ is also likely to deliver more rate hikes in the, in the months to come. However, 
with the RBNZ hinting that it hiked more now at its uh, latest meeting so it can slow down later we believe that between those two commodity linked currencies the loony is likely to perform better in other words we see the case for kiwi cut the kiwi cut uh, pair to continue drifting south for a while more now as for today the spotlight is likely to fall to uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, who is scheduled to speak at the spring meeting of the International, Mon of the International uh, Monetary Fund, excuse me, while later in the day he is due to take part in a panel discussion along with ECB President Christine Lagarde. Now, after raising interest rates at its uh, latest gathering, the FOMC is now expected to deliver a double hike when it meets. Uh, when it meets uh, next at the May meeting, while there is more than 50% chance for a triple hike in June, a, f a 75 basis points hike. Thus, with all that in mind, it will be interesting to see whether Powell will maintain an ultra hoggish tone, and if so, this could encourage some more dollar buying. Now, at the same time, following a cautious approach at last week's ECB meeting, we don't expect Lagarde to sound uh, similarly aggressive. At the press conference following last week's gathering, she said that they will only start raising rates sometime after the end of the asset purchase program, which is expected to, um, to be over in the third quarter. It could be weeks or even several months after APP is over. Lagarde added uh, at that press conference. Therefore, we expect her to stick to her guns, to stick to her relatively dovish view, something that could highlight again the divergence uh, in monetary policy between uh, the Fed and the ECB, and perhaps push uh, Euro dollar, the Euro dollar pair uh, even lower. Now, as for the rest of today's events, we get inflation data from uh, the Eurozone for March, however, this will be the final data for the month and as it is always the case, both the headline and core rates are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates. The Euro is unlikely to respond to this set. Usually the Euro responds to the preliminary Eurozone inflation data and uh, with traders ignoring the final prints as they just confirm what we already know. So. That's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. At this point, I need to let you know that there will be no uh, weekly Market Outlook webinar uh, this Monday. So feel free to join me uh, with the next one on um, on May 2nd. Uh, you can find the link for the for the webinar in, in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again with the daily market uh, review uh, tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.